Hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, we're looking at another problem in the realm of thermodynamics. Now we start to get into more practical applications using, of course, the theory that we've been looking at in the previous videos and um, the knowledge that we've gathered so far. So here we have a simple design of a steam power plant. And what we need to do is actually find out what is the amount of energy that's needed for this, the amount of energy that's going uh, being outputted in the form of work, the amount of uh, mass we need to put through this uh, in order to get the energy we are seeing. So, you know, getting a bit more practical with the knowledge around thermodynamics and obviously applying the first law here and everything else that we've talked about so far. So this is a problem by UNSW and it reads like so. Consider the simple steam power plant shown below. And here we have a drawing with five different parts, a boiler, a turbine, a condenser, and a pump. And when I say five, there's four components to it, but there's five different, let's call it thermodynamic um, states, right? So state one, two, three, four, and five as per the drawing, okay? Um, some of the properties of the working fluid at different locations in the plant are as follows. So here we have the five locations we just talked about, and they give us the pressure for each, and then specific volume from one, internal energy, and enthalpy. And I'll, I'll, well, I'll read it, the whole thing, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, neglecting the kinetic energy and the potential energy, determine the following quantities per kilogram of working fluid flowing through the plant. A, the turbine work, assuming that the expansion process is ad adiabatic. B, the heat transferred from the condenser. C, the heat transferred to the boiler if the adiabatic pump absorbs 4 kilojoules per kilogram of work. D, the heat transferred in the line between the boiler and the turbine. And E, compare the turbine and the pump work, comment on the results, and also find the mass flow rate through the plant in kilograms per second if power developed by the turbine is 3,000 kilowatts. So a lot to take in here. And this is, you know, just honestly, this is not a complicated problem to solve. There's just, you know, a lot of little steps we need to take and ensure that we're doing this um, in the right way. So first thing I want to comment is if we look at each of these states, right, in each of these states, I want you to notice that, I want you to note that for each of them we have, or for most of them, we have two thermodynamic properties. So here we have, oh, for all of them we have the pressure. Okay, and then here we have specific volume, here we have enthalpy, here we have internal energy, and here we have enthalpy. What does that mean? It means that these states are completely defined, right? So as long as we're talking about thermodynamic properties, we have these completely defined, completely solved. The only one that we don't have is state number five, the one right after the pump right there, because that for that one we have the pressure, okay? But since we know they're all related, what we can see is if we know the amount of work that is required as we go from four to five, and we know the amount of heat that goes in as we go from five to one, we can use these two info to be able to calculate the state for five, right? Or put another way to calculate another property for state five and therefore completely solve it. So it, it's a good exercise to do that, you know, before starting the problem because obviously it allows us to um, kind of think about what we need to do to solve this, okay? And just to keep the color scheme I've been doing here, let me put a little blue here, okay. Um, what else? Neglecting kinetic energy and potential energy. This is super important because when we do our um, energy balance, right, and we do our first law, application of the first law, we don't need to worry about velocity and height with, um, with the gravitational force, right? That's super helpful. And this is generally something with this regard. So this is just, you know, something that makes it easier for us to do. But in this case, they're already saying, don't worry about it. Um, what else? Another thing I want to point out is they want the following quantities per kilogram, right? So per kilogram, that is, they want what is sometimes referred to as specific, 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 properties. So what does that mean? It means that if I'm looking for um, enthalpy, 
I'm looking that for that in joules or kilojoules per kilogram, right? If I'm looking for internal energy, that's going to also be joules per kilogram. If it's, I don't know, entropy, it's going to be joules per kilogram per Kelvin, and so on and so forth. So it's always per kilogram, which is good to know. It's one thing less that for us to do, because we need to worry about the mass. Okay, so I think we're ready to start. Um, and the first thing we need to find out is, oh, actually, the first, last thing, still on the problem analysis. Here we're looking for work, so it's going to be in watts, joules per second. Here we're looking for heat transfer, so heat transfer, that can also be in kilojoules per kilograms or watts, depending on the what were um, units we've been given. Same thing here, really. Kilojoules per kilogram. Um, heat transfer, same thing. Kilojoules per kilogram or watts, depending if we're given a mass flow rate or not. Heat transferred, same thing here. So I'm just put this. And then finally, um, mass flow rate. So this is mass flow rate in kilograms per second. So, you know, very straightforward in terms of the units that we need to worry about here. So the first thing we need to do is the turbine work, assuming the process is adiabatic. And what we can do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Let me just do this. And I'm going to note that we're going from state two to state three. That's what happens in the turbine. And what we're getting out of it, I should put, probably copy this too. What we're getting out of it is work. That's the whole idea, right? The whole idea is that this Turbine is doing from work, and we're extracting that work to do something useful with it. So if I'm looking for this work, what do I need to think about? Well, what are the things that are, this is my control volume, right? The one I just drew here, our control volume. And we have work coming out, and we know that we have um, enthalpy going in from state two, and at the other side we know we have enthalpy on state three coming out. Is there anything else? Well, there isn't any heat, we know that much because it clearly says this is an adiabatic process, put nil here. Um, and we don't need to worry about kinetic energy or potential energy, so we are good with that. And what does the first law tell us? Well, if we have enthalpy 2 going in and these two guys coming out, because we can't create or destroy any energy, the delta E for energy needs to be zero, and therefore the enthalpy 2 needs to be equal to the work out plus enthalpy 3. Okay, and here is um, the kicker because if we have mass flow rates, we can put the mass flow rate here and get this guy in watts, but it clearly says in the beginning that it wants the answers in kilojoules per kilogram, so therefore we can keep as is and we're fine. Okay, so if we want to find what is the work out, that is simple to do. That's simply going to be the ent um, entropy of state 2 minus entropy of state 3. Um, what do we know about these states? State 2 is completely defined. Enthalpy is right there, so all good. 3,002.5. 3,000 3, 2.5 kilojoules per kilogram. And then for state 3, we don't have the enthalpy, but not to worry because we do have the internal energy. Right? So what we can do is I can go... Um, what is what are we working with here? Uh, steam power plant. So we can go into the steam table. I can look for a pressure of 16 kilopascals, and from there look at the internal energy of 22.28. All right. So 16 saturated water, 16 kilopascals is the same thing as 0.16 bar. So here I am, and here I'm interested in the internal energy. So these two guys here. So these two values here, and my question is. Where does 22228 2, 2, 2, fall? Does it fall below this guy, in between, or above this guy? Well, in between, right? So it falls right here. So therefore, we can be sure that this is, so let me say state. State 3 is a saturated mixture. Okay, so if I want to know what is um, the enthalpy, that's what I'm trying to find out. All I need to do first is find what's the quality and then use the quality to find out how much of this guy and this guy is contributing to state three. Okay, so what I do is, okay, the quality in state three is just going to be um, U that I have of state three minus U of the liquid and the difference U of the gas and U of the liquid. So this is 22, um, 28.2, 28.2, 28 
28.2. The liquid one is 232, 232. And on over here we have 2450. 2450. And then obviously the same one here, 232. Two. And when we do this, what we find is the quality is 0.9 or 90%. So 90% of this mixture is um, is steam, vapor, and the other 10% is liquid. All right, so what do we do now? Well, we just grab these two values here, the two, three, two, and the two, six, oh, one. We grab these two guys, and we know that the enthalpy will be just a contribution of these two guys. Okay, so what I need to do now is, okay, what is the, change choice, the enthalpy on state three? Well, that will simply be, that will simply be the enthalpy of the fluid plus the, oh, actually, yeah, let's do that. Enthalpy of the fluid times 10% plus the enthalpy of the vapor times 90%. As simple as that, we know everything we need to know. So 2, 3, 2 times 10, that's 23.2 plus the 2, 6, oh, 1 times 90%, and I'm going to do that by, um, and this gives me 2364.1, 2364.1. Let's check if this makes sense. Um, and it has to be closer to this number than this number, and indeed it is. Um, yeah, that checks out. That's all good. Unit-wise, I can be sure that this unit is kilograms per, sorry, kilojoules per kilogram. So all good there, kilojoules per kilogram. I can now grab this number and happily paste it where we were missing it here. Okay, so work out, work out will be, according to the numbers we just found, 638.4, 638.4, okay, and that's kilojoules per kilogram, and that's my answer. So, um, depends on what you, the way, the convention you're using, you might say, you want to say this is um, energy out, energy out, because obviously this is, um, if you were to flip it, it will be negative, right, but in this case, because we did this energy balance and we did it in the beginning, we know the energy is going out, so we've known it for all along. We even marked it down here, so you don't need to do anything as long as you have this. You're showing that you know this is energy out, so you don't even need this much here. Okay, beautiful. That's part A. Part B, the heat transferred from the condenser. So now the condenser, where is the condenser? Here is a condenser, okay? So we're going from state three to state four, we're going through a condenser, so as we go from here, from there, there are the ideas that some of the steam, as we just seen, um, is leaving still, 90% of it is still steam, 10% is liquid, and the condenser, the idea is that the condenser is going to make everything go back to the liquid form, so that the pump is can work only with liquid, uh, maximize the lifetime of the pump, minimize the amount of energy it needs to use, to then pump it through the whole cycle again. So what happens here? Well, once again, if I do my little energy balance here, what do I have going in and going out? Well, I have obviously Q going out as per the drawing. Over here I have enthalpy three going in, and over here I have enthalpy number four going out. So all I need to do here is grab this um, control volume, and I'm going to I'm going to put it down here. Okay. So this is part B. And here we go, we don't need this much. Um, enthalpy 3 we just found, found, that's all good. Enthalpy 4 we need to check, I'm not sure if we have it yet, but the energy balance here tells us that the um, enthalpy 3 has to be equal to enthalpy 4 plus Q out, right? And therefore Q out, which is what I'm looking for, has to be simply enthalpy 3 minus enthalpy 4. So let's check our state 4. State 4 is at 15 kilopascals, or 0.15 bar, and the enthalpy is already given, right? So 188.5, so that's super easy, 188.5. Um, 
all we need to do, oops, all we need to do is, okay, so this equals the, what was the number we found, 2361? No, 2364. 2364.1 minus 188 point something that I forgot. 5. 0.5. All in the same unit of kilojoules per kilogram. So Q out is um, 2175.6. 2175.6 kilojoules per kilograms. And this is E answer part B. Again, same thing as before. Okay, as long as I have Q out, I'm all good. If not, you can do this energy balance um, kind of blind. And I mean, you know, assume a direction to for your Q. And then if you get negative or no, positive numbers, it's going to tell you what direction you're going. In this case, we know it's out, so all good there.